And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden. Down to the depths with a veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Hangman's Rope. Jim, it came from our right. We better take a look. Yeah. I hope nothing I don't, Huh? Look. Hanging from that tree, swinging back and forth. It's a man. The Hall of Fantasy will present The Hangman's Rope in just a moment. And now for our story, an original tale of fantasy entitled The Hangman's Rope. <laughs> there is a legend in hell, a tale about the hangman. For 23 years, the executioner for the crown. Jack Ketch was his nine governor. Jack Ketch. <laughs> I remember we were on our way back from the lake. Jim and Carol and I. And for some reason, we started back to the city later than usual. We hadn't been driving for more than half an hour when one of those sudden spring storms. Now, where did that come from? Someone said there might be a storm tonight, but I thought we'd be home before it broke. Well, we'd better put the wipers on. We started back too late tonight. What, the, what was it that held us up, Jim? I don't know. A lot of things. When I finally looked at my watch, I couldn't believe my eyes. Yeah. I know. Huh? Well, there's a man right in front of the car. Huh? You stay here, Carol. Come on, honey. We'd better take a look. Yeah, right. We didn't hit him, did we? I don't think so. Now, why would someone be out in the middle of the road on a night like this? Well, there's a lot of crazy people in this world, Arnie. Ah, he must have been one of them. Yeah, I'm getting soaked. Now, he was just about here. I... Huh. I can't understand. Jim, look. Where? There. There beside the tree. I don't see anything. Huh. I guess I was wrong. You, you know, for a minute I thought... I thought I saw someone hanging from that tree. Oh, you must have been mistaken. You know, I can't figure this out, Arnie. That guy was out here on the road right in front of us. I saw him just as plain as day. <laughs> but now there's no one around. Yeah. We'd, uh... We'd better get back to the car. Yeah, that's for sure. There's no sense looking back at that tree, Arnie. There's nothing back there. I don't know. I, I thought I saw someone swinging there back and forth with a, with a rope around his neck. Oh, no, you couldn't have. Maybe it was some kind of optical illusion. It could have been a shadow or a branch or anything. Yeah, that's right. Anything. Well, there's the car. <laughs> you two must like it out there in the rain. Are you kidding no, I'm not. All the time that you were out there in the rain, the man you almost hit was talking to me. What did you say? You heard me. Oh, now, sis, wait a minute. I looked back at the car a couple of times. I didn't see anyone talking to you. Well, I don't know what's wrong with your eyes, then. I asked him if we couldn't give him a lift. And he said, no, he, he only had a little distance to go. Carol, honey, this is the truth. We didn't see anyone near this car. No. Look, I can prove it. He insisted I take this... Oh, that's strange. What? He was... He was such an unusual man. Not American. He... He insisted that I accept a ring from him. Practically forced it on me. I put it in my pocket and... And now it, it's gone. And in its place... Is a funny little piece of rope. Shaped like a... Like a hangman's noose. I 
I knew Carol wasn't lying to us. I asked her if she would let me have the little piece of rope. After I dropped them off at their place, I went home, took it out, and set it on the table. I can't explain it, but there was something about that rope which seemed old. It was made of hemp, the kind of rope you would imagine Jack Ketch might have used 250 years ago when he was the hangman. That night, as I slept, my sleep was troubled. In my dreams, there was a huge black gallows. I saw a man climbing the stairs to his death. He reached the top and stood there. Standing beside him was a black-hooded man. He raised his hand and... The trap door sprung open. There was a scream. And then I saw this man swinging back and forth. His face was hidden from me, yet there was something strangely familiar about him. I felt as if I knew him quite well. We'll return to the tale of The Hangman's Rope in just a moment. Back now to our tale of fantasy entitled The Hangman's Rope. When I awoke from my dream, I couldn't get back to sleep. For in the black blankness of sleep, I had come into contact with death. As the morning approached, I fell into a nervous sleep. I was awakened. Hello? Arnie, this is Carol. Uh, could you meet Jim and me for lunch today? Mm. What time? Oh, about one. I hope you'll forgive me if I don't sound awake, Carol. I, I just couldn't sleep last night. I didn't sleep either, Arnie. I'll... I'll see you at one. Then I guess I wasn't the only one who missed out on sleep last night, huh? That's right. I don't know what it was, but I had the craziest dream. When I woke up, I couldn't get back to sleep. But that's what happened to me, too. What, uh, what kind of dreamer was it, Carol? Well, everything was dark and gloomy. I seemed to be watching a... An execution, an old-time execution, maybe two or, or three hundred years old. A man walked up the steps of the gallows. Another man was there with a black hood over his head. He raised his arm, the trap door opened, and... Uh, and, the, and the man swung back and forth, and there was something familiar about him, isn't that right? Yes, but how did you know? Because my dream was the same as yours, sis. Exactly the same. Jim's and my vacations were due the following week. We decided to spend it up at the lake, where his family had a cottage. Carol said she might be able to join us on the last weekend, but not before that. Jim and I left the following Friday night. Well, I can certainly use this vacation. Maybe we can catch a few northerns this time, huh? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, is your family going to come up here while we're there? No, no. Carol will be up the last weekend, that's all. Mm. Well, then I guess we'll have the place to ourselves, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, why are you stopping here? Last Sunday night, this is where we stopped. I'm going to get out and take a look at the side of the road for a minute. Oh, Arnie... Why don't you forget about it? I just want to check it, that's all. That's the tree, isn't it? I... I think so. On that limb. That's where I saw him hanging. Oh, just thinking about it makes me nervous. Come on, let's go back to the car. All right. Carol said that while we were out of the car, she was talking to the fellow we saw. If that's the case, I can't understand why we didn't see him, too. You know, Jim, there just wasn't enough time for him to get away from the car without our seeing him. Unless... 
Unless what? Unless he was never there. Oh, but that could... Arnie! Look! In the car seat. Another little piece of rope. Before I could stop him, Jim threw the little noose out into the darkness. A little piece of rope, an inanimate thing, coiled and twisted, which somehow seemed to be alive. We reached the cottage perhaps half an hour later, and though we were both disturbed by what had happened, still it didn't interfere with our sleep. The next day, we went out fishing early. Had little luck, and were on our way back to the cottage when the woman who owned the property next door stopped us. Good morning, Mr. Stanley. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Bennett. Uh, out for the weekend? Well, for the next two weeks. Oh, excuse me, uh, Mrs. Bennett, this is Arnold Slade. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Slade. Well, thank you. Same here. Uh, you must be that young man that Carol's going to marry. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, she'll make you a fine wife, Mr. Slade. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, the reason I stopped you, Mr. Stanley, is, is this. Mm -hmm. There's something strange going on out here. Oh, what do you mean? Well, the constable came by the other day and asked me if I'd seen any strangers here. A couple of people have died over on the other side of the lake. And the constable ain't been able to find out what happened. How... how did these people die? Well, that's what's so strange about it. Both of them... Were killed by hanging. Hanging? That's right. Old Mr. Taylor, who, who lived about a, oh, a mile down by the shore, he was one of them. And he couldn't hardly walk. They found him swinging from a tree. But he was several feet off the ground. And nobody can figure out how he got up there. What the woman had said frightened me. It seemed as if we were getting deeper and ever more deeply into something from which we would never be able to get away. That night, it was Saturday, Jim and I went out for a walk. It was a particularly dark night. The moon was obscured by clouds, and as we walked along, I could hear the chirping of many crickets. And occasionally a bullfrog's hoarse voice raised in protest. Arnold... This thing has me worried. In what way, Jim? Uh, this whole thing. Uh, last Sunday night and today when we stopped by the tree. And then what Mrs. Bennett told us. I've been thinking about it, too. Well, that's strange. What? The crickets have suddenly stopped. It's too quiet. <laughs> Jim, it came from over there. We better take a look up. <laughs> It's too quiet, just as you said. There must be something terribly wrong up here. I hope nothing... I'm going... Huh? Look. Hanging from that tree. Swinging back and forth. It's... It's a man. What are we going to do? We better cut him down. No. We better call the authorities first. I guess you're right. Come on, Mrs. Bennett's got a phone. If we hurry, we may be able to get out a great deal of help to the authorities. Jim, did you notice how high that branch was? I saw it. Yes? Why, Mr. Stanley, it's you. Uh, Mrs. Bennett, may we use your phone? Well, I suppose so. Uh, come in. Thanks. Thank you. But it's in the other room. Thanks. So what's the matter, Mr. Slade? It looks like something's happened to upset you two. Well, it, has, it, has. it certainly has. The constable? Why, what's happened? We were out for a walk. Yes? yes we sir. heard a scream. I oh. think you'd better we get out of where the away. scream had we come from. Man and hanging from a tree. We found a man hanging from a tree. That's right, hanging. Yes, we'll stay here at Mrs. Bennett's. Yeah, thanks. Oh, what, you're telling me the truth, young man? That's the truth, ma'am. Mr. Stanley... Is what Mr. Slade told me the truth? I'm afraid it is. Oh, then no one is safe around here. I wonder who it was. What difference does that make, Mrs. Bennett? A man's been murdered. It makes a lot of difference, Mr. Slade. If it was Bill Roberts, then it was just like the other two. I saw him just the other day. And he said someone was playing a joke on him. That he'd been sent a, a little piece of rope. 
shaped in the form of a noose. You are listening to the tale of The Hangman's Rope on this week's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. And now, back to our story, entitled The Hangman's Rope. little piece of rope. Both Jim and I stared at each other for a moment. It might be coincidence. We knew that, but it was difficult trying to make ourselves believe that. About half an hour later, the constable arrived. You two found him, that right, Mr. Stanley? That's right. We uh, were out taking a walk. We heard a scream, and then we found him. Can't make heads nor tails out of this. Three of them. Three deaths in two weeks, all the same way. They all received a little piece of rope just before they died. A little piece of rope? Yeah, that's right. I say all three. I ain't seen the body yet, but I have a pretty good idea who it is, Bill Roberts. It's enough to make a person afraid of the dark, Constable. Yeah, ain't it? Well, I want you two to take me to him. I'll go, too. No, you stay oh, here. But... As a... You stay off the phone. Oh. I don't want the rest of the people to hear anything about this, at least for the time being. Things are bad enough as it is. All right, come on, let's go. Now, remember what I said, Mrs. Bennett. Don't you worry, nun constable. I hope that woman stays off the phone. The whole county will be in an uproar if she doesn't. Do you, uh, have any idea who's behind these deaths? No, well, I haven't. Funny thing, he was up so high. I don't see how he could have gotten up there by himself. I only wish I had something to work on. Well, we'll see if he's just like the others in a little while. How far away was he? There. There he is, Constable. I want to get a look at his face. Yeah. I was afraid of that. Who is it? Bill Roberts. But how did he get up there? Branch is 20 feet off the ground. You take an acrobat to climb that tree. Bill wasn't any acrobat. Well, how did he get up there? I don't know. Three people received pieces of rope, and then a couple of weeks later, we find them hanging from a tree. You tell me the answer. We cut him down, but it took almost an hour to get up on that branch to do it. We put him in the constable's car and drove him back to town. Before he left, we told him that we too had received the little gift, the noose of rope, which had been in three instances the forerunner of death. When we got back to the cottage, we had a bite to eat, and seeing as we weren't in the mood to sleep, we sat down to read. I picked up a little book I hadn't seen before and read it from cover to cover. It held an eerie fascination, and I wasn't able to put it down till the last page had been turned, the last word read. Jim? Hmm? Where did you get this book? I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Why? It looks like a first edition of... 200 years ago. Well, let me see it. Here. Hmm. A short history concerning the mysterious reappearance of Jack Ketch, a hangman who served as executioner for 23 years. I've never seen this book before. Well, then how did it get here? I don't know. Hmm, Jack Ketch. Say, he was the hangman in England who took too much pleasure in his work. Isn't that right? I think so. How much of this did you read? All of it. It's not very long. And... This is what I got out of it. Before he died, the book says he had made some kind of a pact with an evil power. It seems they actually do have a written copy of that agreement somewhere in England. And there's his signature. And an illegible scrawl that no one has ever been able to decipher. The pact promises life after death for him in exchange for certain services. Then the book says that year after year, some rather mysterious deaths have occurred. They find the victims hanging from the branch of a tree. A tree almost impossible to climb. And the book also says that each of the murdered people received a little piece of rope before their deaths. Identical to the ones Jack Ketch used as executioner. That is the warning. The warning of death to follow. But that's impossible. The man's been dead for over 250 years. That's right, he's dead. 
But the rest of the story, it's exactly the same thing that's happening to us. Two days later, in late evening, the rest of the story unfolded. Jim had gone down to the store to pick up some cigarettes. I'd been down to the shore doing a little fly casting and had started back up to the cottage. I was surprised at how quickly night had fallen. I wish that I'd brought along a flashlight. From somewhere across the lake, I heard the cry of a dog, and the sound of it filtered through and was carried along by the night air. For some reason, I became unaccountably nervous. I stopped walking. I felt someone was watching me. Then from the darkness of the trees, a man emerged. Here now. Where be you going? Well, back up to my cottage. I was doing some fly casting till night came. Any luck? No. Uh, I'd better be going. No need to hurry Why? Nice out here, ain't it? I suppose so. Let's try and sing you now. The little creatures. I stopped. Little creatures? That's right, Gordon. Crickets and the frogs. They stopped talking. Yes, they. They have. You frightened to be, Governor? Of course not. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You wouldn't understand it, Governor. Is that you down there, Mr. Snade? Oh, uh. Uh, yes, Mrs. Bennett. Uh, do you mind if I join you? No, no, of course not. Ah, oh, good. I'd better be going, eh, Governor? I'll see you another time. Uh, who, who are you talking to? I don't know. He, he, he just stepped out of the darkness and there he was. Well, I guess he's gone now. Yes, I guess he is. Where is Mr. Stanley? Well, he went down to pick up some cigarettes. He should be back soon. Oh, well, the constable told me to tell you that, that he'd be out tonight. Oh, thank you. Would, would you mind walking me back to my place, Mr. Slade? It, it's rather frightening out here when it's this dark. I'll be glad to. That man you were talking to, what, what did he look like? Well, I don't know. I couldn't see his face. He had an accent. It sounded oh. like he might have come from London, Wait a minute. Huh? I... I can't understand it. The crickets and frogs, they've been starting and stopping all night. They must be afraid of something. Every time they stop... What'd you say? Every time they stop, something happens. Arnold, where are you? Uh, I'm walking Mrs. Bennett back to her cottage. Anything wrong? No. I got back from the store and I was wondering where you were. It's just that I have a strange feeling that something is going to happen. Let's go up to our place, Mrs. Bennett. Maybe the constable will want to see you, too. That's a good idea. Land sakes, Mr. Slade. The strangest things have been happening out here lately. Arnold! We'll be right there, Jim. Well, there's someone up here now. I thought it was... Jim! Something's wrong, Mr. Slade. I don't know. Jim? What's the matter? Answer me! <laughs> Mr. Slade, look! Oh, hanging from that tree. It, it's Mr. Stanley! There is a legend, you know, a pile about the hangman. For 23 years, the executioner for the crown. Jack Ketch was his nine governor. <laughs> Jack Ketch. Tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. 
Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental.